With sports engineering, we can model a whole sport and we can use it to push the physical boundaries of the discipline. And if we introduce technology into sport, is it cheating? Let's start with a 100 meter sprint. We've collected data on the average performances of the top 25 athletes in the 100 meter sprint every year since the 1890s. You can immediately see some pretty major spikes in steps, most obviously from the First and Second World Wars, which worsened performance dramatically. The first post-war Olympics were in 1948, so we usually use that year as the baseline for any comparisons that we do. In the 1970s, there's a dramatic increase in times, which was due to the introduction of fully automated timing. Removing the reaction time of the judges setting their stopwatches going increased the time recorded for all runners. There's another smaller step change in 2008, when Usain Bolt came on the scene, with his dramatic win at the Beijing Olympics. What's interesting is that if we remove Bolt from our top 25 and just analyse the other 24, the step change is still there. At these elite levels, it looks like a standout athlete makes everyone else perform better too. The men's 100m sprint has improved by around 5% since 1948. Over the same period, the men's javelin has gone from 70 meters to 85 meters, an increase of 21%. Are we really saying that the performance improvement of these two sports is that different? Well, one issue we have is that with sprinting, our measurement is time, while for javelin, it's distance. What we need is a common metric. That shared measure is an energy calculation. And as an example of how we can visualize that, we can look at the women's 100 meters freestyle swimming event. Now this circle represents a baseline of performance in 1948. And by 2010, performance had improved by 52% to here. Now what are the things that contributed to that performance improvement? Well here we have the globalization effects, and by that I mean population increase, nutrition, coaching, professionalization. But there are other effects that have improved performance in swimming as well. Here we have the Olympic Games oscillation, and that occurs every four years, so that in an Olympic year, you see a small but measurable performance improvement. What about technologies that we've allowed? Well, in swimming, we think about the swimsuit. And in 2000, they went from the traditional female style and the speedos to the longer full body suits. More impressively though, goggles, hats, and shaving down had quite a large effect prior to those swimsuits. And the effect of goggles was to allow the swimmer to train for longer in chlorinated pools, thereby improving performance. Of course, there are technologies that have not been allowed. There were the full body swimsuits in 2008 that had polyurethane panels down the sides. And by 2009, the whole body was covered in polyurethane. And what that did is that reduced the skin friction across the body, it pulled the body in and reduced the cross-sectional area of the body presented to the water, and that reduced hydrodynamic drag. The other thing we've noticed in swimming is the transition between hand timing and fully automated timing, something we've seen in other sports. So with these statistics and with this methodology, we can look at the effect of different factors on sport. And one thing we've noticed is how the globalization has started to reach its limit. The Industrial Revolution has had its impact. Most of the improvements we're seeing in sport today are smaller in nature and due to technology. We started our journey with the birth of modern sport and its development hand in hand with technology. But performances are starting to plateau 
and even with the occasional Usain Bolt mixing things up, world records are going to become rare in some of our sports. Now, athletes don't like that, audiences don't like that, and the ruling bodies don't like that. Sports engineering will hold the balance between the world of the possible, that's Newton's laws, and the world of the allowed, that's the rules of sport. Now, the rules of sport are completely arbitrary, they're steeped in tradition, but they do change. There were 300 ancient Olympic Games, lasting over 1,200 years. And in that time, we went from the sprint to chariot racing. So the science and engineering we're learning with today's sports will be used to develop those sports that we'll see in the 300th modern Olympic Games a thousand years from now.